Hi everyone, this is Hamida. Welcome to Safri Law Channel. Today's topic it is relating to culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Before discuss about the culpable homicide not amounting to murder, in the previous class, uh, what we have discussed, uh, briefly I will just dis try to discuss you. In the previous class, in the previous video, we have discussed about the section 299. Again, we have discussed about the section 300 and what are the difference between section 299 and the 300. Those things we already uh, discussed in the last video. Again, in the culpable homicide, I mentioned that that culpable homicides are there two types. That is the first one is the culpable homicide amounting to murder. And the second one, it is the culpable homicide not amounting to murder. Culpable homicide, when it amounts to murder means all the classes of section 300 when it satisfied then that the culpable homicide which goes to the amounting to murder means all the classes of the section 300 if it is satisfied to that particular case then it is goes to the culpable homicide amounting to murder when that culpable homicide not amounting to murder in the sense what all the exceptions of section 300 all the exceptions of murder if they satisfy, then which goes to the culpable homicide, not amounting to murder. In the sense, here in the culpable homicide, not amounting to murder, in the sense, we have to discuss the all the exceptions of the 300, right? Now, we will go to the uh, next slide. It is relating the first exception. It is relating to the section 300 uh, of the first exception, sudden and grave provocation. Sudden and grave provocation is the one of the exception of the section 300. One of the exception of the section 300. Sudden and grave provocation in the sense what? Here some grave happened and provocation happened. Grave had happened and uh, provocation. Grave in the sense what? Some incident happened. Provocation in the sense instigating to that person. Means instigating by uh, with that particular grave. Means a deceased person provoked to the offender by doing of some grave okay so with that grave and that provocation the offender provoked and committed that act suddenly whatever the act committed suddenly not with premeditation or the pre plan or any with any guilty intention without any guilty intention without any pre plan uh, whatever the act committed suddenly, then only this exception will be applicable. Okay. Now, I will just go with the few of the essentials of the sudden and grave provocation. That is the first essential element of this one. The provocation must be grave and sudden. The provocation must be grave and sudden. Grave in the sense whatever the incident happened. Suppose when we take about to the A and B. Okay. A and B. A is the offender, B is the deceased person. A is the offender, B is the deceased person. B, who used that assault or who misbehave with that yes daughter. Who misbehave with the yes daughter by using of assaulting or by doing of some action also. Okay. Then that A provoked suddenly and he killed to B. A provoked suddenly, not any pre-planned or any intentionally, suddenly committed an act and that then is considered as a one of the exception of murder. If a uh, A committed intentionally or pre-planned, then this exception will not be applicable. It goes to the murder which means culpable homicide amounting to murder. Right, means whatever the grave or the provocation happened suddenly only, not uh, pre-plannedly or intentionally. Again, uh, again another essential element of this uh, exception it is, by reason of such grave and sudden provocation, the offender must have been deprived power of self-control. Yes, here the offender who lost his self-control, with that grave or to that provocation and he committed the act. The offender committed the act and when he lost his self-control, when he lost his self-control, then he committed along with that uh, whatever the grave happened or to the provocation of the deceit and he committed that he killed to the bee. So, 
when when the person who uh, having not who is not having any intentionally or not pre mediation of a the particular act now we'll go to the next one uh, the death of the person who gave provocation or of any other person by mistake or accident must have been caused so this essential element also which supposed to this exception means i'll just go with this this example only here he is an offender is an a deceased person okay or the victim person b and c is also one of the third party c is also third party okay b provoked and also who uh, grave to the yes daughter means who assaulted or who misbehaved to the yes daughter okay ye wants to kill b but by mistakenly accidentally he killed to c okay ye by mistakenly accidentally who killed to c so this one what by mistakenly happened but still he will be liable and uh, this one also comes under the exception of the murder but this one is not goes to the uh, section 80 of the chapter 4 of indian penal code means here by mistake in the sense uh, already in the general, chapter 4 we know that the section 80 in the sense whatever the act mistakenly unfortunately if they happened it is goes to the general class no so here general exception this is not applicable because of the, some grave happened some provocation uh, also happened and suddenly actually uh, the person who wants to kill to the uh, the provoked person but unfortunately who killed to the third party so this exception also applicable and this section which is supports to the sudden and pro, uh, provocation of the exception of 300 okay now we will go to the one of the case law it's relating to the km nanavati versus state of maharashtra km nanavati versus maharashtra nanavati was a naval officer and his wife uh, name was silvia and he had three children okay so uh silvia who had illicit intimacy with the uh, one of the person uh, whose name was ahuja okay so the ye knew that complete uh, story in between of the uh, his wife and the ahuja one day he went to the ahuja's house with the revolver okay the nanavati who went to the residence of the ahuja with the revolver in between ahuja and the nanavati some uh, discuss the communication happened some heat communication happened with that both the parties either the nanavati and that ahuja hope both the party abused each other and uh, with that the nanavati who shot to the ahuja and ye died okay so this uh, is this is the a brief uh, story of the nanavati and the ahuja now coming to the case study when we uh, discuss about the uh, facts of the case in the trial the nanavati who used as a plea in the trial that was the ahuja who used the sentences while doing of the communication that sentence was relating to uh, which provoked to him and he killed to him that sentence is relating uh, the ahuja said am i married to every woman with i sleep am i married to every woman with i sleep this sentence used by the ahuja so that he kill then the supreme court held that this sentence was not sufficient for the ground for the exception of the murder this is a not a sufficient ground for the exception of the murder then he also stated he also stated that that the person in the sense the ahuja deceased person who uh, had a uh, sodomy who had an act of sodomy with his son who had an act of sodomy with his son then that the court satisfied and the court held that yes this one is a good ground for the exception of the murder so this nanavati case which goes to the uh, sudden and grave provocation and one of the exception of the culpable homicide not amounting to murder now we will go to the next exception it is really relating to the exceeding the right of private defense exceeding the right of private defense private defense we know that all that private defense we can see in the general exception that is the chapter 4 of indian penal code from the section 96 to the 
what i am saying about to the private defense private defense in the sense what a person can use the defense if it is harm to the body or to the property if as uh, harm to the body or to the property then any person can use the private defense right but what in that section also they describe about that private defense also should use in reasonable force it should be use reasonable force but not exceeding to that power if exceeding uh, exceeding to that force means what if they use the exceeding force then it is not comes under the the general defenses of the chapter 4 of the indian penal code but this is comes under the, if they use the extreme level extreme force if they use it then it goes to the one of the exception of the uh, murder just we will go to the essential elements of the exception 2 of the murder that is the first one an act must be done in exercise of right to private defense of the person or the property means here whatever the act committed by doing of right to private defense of his property or to the person right again second act must have been done in a good faith act must have been done in a good faith means without any guilty intention or any pre plannedly or any premeditation or whatever it may means for the protection of his body for the protection of his property whatever the act they committed without any guilty intention with a good faith if they committed then if exceeding to his power then this exception will be applicable if they are not exceeding his power if they use that reasonable force only then which goes to that general exceptions of the indian penal code right so suppose example i will take yes if a and b two parties are there right a uh, just a is an offender b is a deceased person a is an offender b is a deceased person or the victim party right b actually who slap to a b slap to a actually b is also an old man b is an old man who slap to a a by uh, protecting to his body or something he uh, use that extreme level and a kill to b what here whatever the necessary force is mandatory to that particular affair particular case he used to extreme level of power he used it right whatever he actually a person who uh, assaulted or who slapped is what reasonable force who used it but the offender who used the extreme level by obviously the offender also not having the guilty intention or not the pre plan but whatever the act committed suddenly only i mean at that time only okay but still he will be liable because of this is not goes to the uh, general exceptions of the chapter 4 it comes under the exception of the murder this is comes under the exception of the murder but not goes to the general exceptions of the indian penal code is it clear so that the court said whatever the reasonable it is necessary that means necessary force only have to use not the extreme level of force okay now we will go to the one of the case law it is uh, relating to the banwar singh and others versus state of madhya pradesh In here the court said that the means means the part means the offender means necessary force means describe about the necessary force means the case if the extreme level if they use it if the use that extreme level then it's not goes to the general exception which comes under the one of the exception of the murder means necessary force has to use while protecting to his property or while protecting to his body right now we will go to the next exception that is it is relating to the offenses committed by a public servant offenses committed by the public servant public servants duty is to what they have to do their duty with bound bind by the law and with that uh, uh, means protecting to something means public duty is to by dis discharging his duty if they committed any act it should be reasonable and which is supports to the law okay that then only it goes to the means whatever the act they committed lawfully they are going when this comes under the unlawfully if they extreme to that level, uh, level like offenses committed by the public servant is if extreme level if they use it 
by discharging of that duty then that person also liable suppose if that uh, uh, police while doing of the interrogation if they use uh, whatever the necessary force whatever that power they have to use they extreming to those powers they exceed exceeding to those powers and they use the third degree level of uh, uh, punishment the third degree of uh, uh, punishment if they give it to the uh, accused person or to whom any uh, person to, to whom he is doing the interrogation then what then it is comes under the the uh, power of the person who committed the public officer who committed the extreme level of offenses here few of the essential elements which has mentioned that is offenses committed by the public servant or by some other person acting in the aid of such public servant is the advancement of the public justice yes they are doing that act while doing of their duty acting the duty in the sense du during the discharging of their duty yes the committed a person during the duty only of uh, the act committed next one public servant or such other person exceeds the powers given to him by law that means the law who has given some power to that public servant if they exceeds to that power means here the police officer exceeds to his power and who used the third degree and who killed or committed any offense to the accused person then what he is against to that he he went to the against to the law and he committed the offense offense okay so in one another point is also described that is caused by doing an act which he is in good faith believes to be means actual whatever the act committed not intentionally committed in a good faith during that course of their employment during the course of discharging his duty only committed with a good intention only without any guilty intention or with, without any pre plan still he exceeding to his power then he will be liable he will be punishable according to that section 300 and one of the exception of this uh, this means this uh, act is goes to the one of the exception of the section 300 again one more uh, uh, essential element which has mentioned in the exception 3 that is the act must have been done without any ill will towards the person whose death is caused obvious means any ill will in the sense what ill intention ill intention or guilty intent without any guilty intention with a good faith only the act is committed okay but he exceeds to his power he exceeds to his force for that exceeds to his force a person die so this is not goes to the exception this is goes to the one of the exceptions of the murder if he is having the intention if is uh, uh, means pre plannedly they committed then the section 300 the various classes described in the section 300 which supposed and the person who uh, will be punishable according to the section 302 okay means this one which goes to the murder it's not a exception of the uh, one of the exception of the section 300 but if with a good faith without any guilty intention committed but exceeding to his power then only this exception will be applicable is it clear now we will go to the one of the case law it is relating to the dukhi singh versus state so dukhi singh versus state in that uh, uh, railway police who shot to the fireman unintentionally but he wants to shoot to the uh, one of the thief who was running okay so here unintentionally happened but he exceeds to his power what exceeds actually Uh, he has to catch the thief in the sense has to give some of the punishment not to shoot to that thief but he extreme uh, extreme level he used it exceeding to his power and he shoot he actually he wants to shoot to the thief but unintentionally he shoot to the other party so this he, in this case also this exception which is goes to I mean, uh, means it is relating to the exceptions of the murder but this one not goes to the general exceptions of the indian penal code okay now we will go to the fourth exception of the culpable homicide not amounting to murder or the fourth exception of the murder that is the death caused in sudden fight death caused in sudden fight yes death caused in the sudden fight means quarrel sudden quarrel if the quarrel happened suddenly while doing of the quarrel if any other party died 
then it is comes under the sudden fight when if the party is not having any guilty intention and the quarrel also started suddenly okay and without any pre plan pre mediation or any guilty intention suddenly committed or the it's immaterial which party started which party is provoked it is immaterial okay whoever they started with whoever that party started the quarrel but if the others parties death happened in the sense if the person is not having any guilty intention or any premeditation or anything else then this exception will be uh, means this uh, act which is goes to the one of the exception of the murder okay i'll just go with the few of the essentials of the sudden fight that is a section uh, exception 4 right first death must be caused in a sudden fight the death happened in the sudden fight only sudden fight must be without any pre mediation without any pre plan or pre uh, discussion relating to the sudden fight next it must occur in the heat of passion upon sudden quarrel yes this one happened with the heat of passion means with the heat with that aggressiveness that quarrel happened with that aggressiveness a person who killed to the other person next one the offender must have not taken undue advantage or must have not acted in a cruel or unusual manner so he is not the person who not used that any unused or a, uh, undue advantage or any cruel matter but while doing of that act it's happened suddenly happened the death happened suddenly next one the fight must be with the person uh, the, the fight must be with that person only means the fight whatever the fight happened with that particular deceased person only happened and whoever the start started that it's a immaterial uh, while well, uh, deciding that particular case but with that whatever the act committed with the heat of passion only it's happened okay now we will go to the Suren Singh versus state of Punjab it's relating to the exception for of, of the culpable homicide not amounting to murder Suren Singh versus state of uh, Punjab that the court uh, described and differentiated between the exception one and the exception four exception one what I said means what is it's relating to it's relating to the sudden and grave provocation right exception four it is the sudden fight okay so here what the court uh, described about the what is that uh, difference what is the slight uh, difference between that first exception and the exception four in the exception uh, one and four in both that the provocation is there in the second exception one and the exception four in both that exception provocation is there but in the exception one some grave happened obviously here also some grave happened some injury happened okay here in the exception four also some injury happened and provocation also be happened here also some injury happened some provocation happened with that injury and in the first exception in the first exception with the grave and the provocation he lost his self-control who lost his self-control but whereas when we go to the exception four with the heat passion who uh, uh, who uh, killed to the other person with that aggressiveness who killed the other person yes here the first party who injured to the second party in the sense the deceased party injured to the accused whereas in this case only the grave and sudden uh, provocation only happened but it's uh, not related to the physical injury happened whereas it's connecting to the sudden fight so those things has described in a surrender in versus state of punjab okay now we will go to the next exception it is relating to the death caused of person consenting to it death caused of person consenting to it yes here uh, the death was caused with the consent of the deceased if a person in the sense the deceased person who gives the consent to the offender with that consent the offender killed to the deceased then actually when we go to the few of the essential when why, with, with the consent if they committed voluntarily if the deceased who gives uh, the consent voluntarily without any uh, uh, forcible or fraud of the offender if they give voluntarily then this exception will be applicable uh, acceptable so here few things but they describe few of the essential elements that is the the death was caused with the consent of the disease and the disease was then above the 18 years of age one thing we have to be remember that the deceased age is more than that 18 years if the deceased who gives the consent voluntarily 
without fraudulently or forcibly whatever that he who gives the consent to the offender with that consent who killed to the uh, deceased person then only this exception will be applicable okay but if the age of the deceased person is minor if the uh, deceased person forcibly has given the consent fraudulently he has given the consent then this is not comes under the exception this directly which goes to the section 3 or uh, 300 means culpable homicide amounting to murder according to the section 302 they will get the punishment but here if the deceased person voluntarily without any force or fraudulently major person when the major person who gives the consent to the offender with that consent uh, if the act committed then this exception will be applicable okay is it clear now the we will go to the one of the case law it is uh, relating to the consent dashrath pashwan was a state of bihar dashrath pashwan was a state of bihar in this case uh, uh the, uh, the that uh, offender who failed in the 10th uh, board exam and uh, he, he went to the home and he discussed with his wife he wants to uh, take suicide he wants to do suicide then that the wife whose age was 19 years she said okay you die you do the suicide but before you kill me you do the suicide but before you kill me so here what that uh, the means the wife who has given the consent with that consent uh, the offender who killed to his wife the court said yes because of voluntarily only who has given the consent along with that that age also 19 years so this accept this whatever the consent has given it's acceptable and also comes under the one of the exception of the murder but it's not comes under the murder is it clear so culpable homicide not amounting to murder in the sense all the five exceptions of section 300 when it satisfied then only which goes to the culpable homicide not amounting to murder otherwise which is comes under the culpable homicide amounting to murder okay now we will go to the punishments okay if it is relating to the culpable homicide not amounting to murder according to the section 300 the punishment imprisonment for life or imprisonment of either description of term which may be extend to 10 years and shall also liable to fine imprisonment for life it is a relating to the class 1 right if it is might be having some intention in some level then that they will get the life imprisonment or else imprisonment of either description of term which may be 10 years of punishment in the sense if they have with the good faith uh, not having any premeditation or any guilty intention if they committed any act then this 10 years of punishment the court will give okay so this is relating to the this section 304 which is uh, relating to the the punishment is relating to the culpable homicide not amounting to murder okay now we will go to the section 302 it's a uh, relating to the punishment for the culpable homicide amounting to murder or murder culpable homicide amounting to murder or murder we know the section 302 in the sense is a punishment for the murder we know that everyone we know it about it, that means murder uh, uh, punishment it is uh, we can see in the section 302 yes it is related to the punish punishment is related to culpable homicide amounting to murder or to the murder that punishment it is death punishment or the impri life imprisonment and they also shall shall also liable to fine means here that the penalty they will give in some situation death penalty they will give in some situation the death penalty also they will give in the rarest of rarest cases only but imprisonment for life is also uh, one of the heinous kind of punishment they will prefer to the this relating to the offense which is relating to the section 300 is it clear yes uh, uh whatever the related material if you want it you just email it now uh, we'll send to the uh, through that email i'll just send the all the materials whatever it's relating to the culpable homicide amounting to murder and culpable homicide not amounting to murder thank you okay.